welcome to the first session of our Chaos Show. My name is Jeremy Allen. I'm the Vice President of Sisu Cinema Robotics. First, thank you for joining us today. We're excited to talk with you about robots on set. A little reminder that we've got three additional sessions uh, throughout the Chaos Show event. Thursday, we're going to be talking about virtual productions with our friends at Rivety Film. Next Monday, join us to watch the robot in action on an actual shoot. Mike's going to walk us through a very cool uh, shot that he's created for you. Finally, next Thursday, we're going to be talking about new products. We're also going to be demonstrating high-speed uh, cinematography with a fantastic team at 8183. Joining me today are Jacob Robinson and Mike Morgan. Well, yeah, it's great to be here, guys. Uh, my name is Jacob Robinson. I am the Director of Systems Engineering at CSU, and I'm also a robot operator. And I'm Mike Morgan. I'm Head of Marketing. I've uh, been here for seven years, and we're excited to, to show you what we're doing here at CSU today. Uh, before we jump in, though, I wanted to just throw in a pitch for following us on Instagram. There's a QR code on screen. Go ahead and scan that. Uh, it'll take you to our profile. Just follow us. We've got a lot of amazing partners doing really cool stuff with our robots. Uh, we like to repost that on our Instagram. So we encourage everybody to get on there uh, if you're interested at all in seeing what is being done with these robots. Uh, I'd also like to point out that we've got Phil, who is monitoring the chat right now. If you've got any questions throughout this session, uh, go ahead and drop those questions in the chat. He'll try to answer as many of those as he can. And if he feels like there's anything that we need to address here, uh, then we can do that as well. So with that, uh, we're here to talk today about why you're seeing more and more robots on set. I'm guessing that uh, just about everybody here has either worked directly with the robot or has been around a robot on set or at the very least seen it on social media. Um, a robot being used on set. So uh, it's clear that these robots are, uh, there's an uptick in the usage of them. Um, and that's what we want to address today. So uh, Jacob, I know we've got a lot of questions that are pretty frequently asked. Among those, are we looking at a robot takeover and are these robots taking our jobs? Well, uh, robot takeover, maybe. Uh, but definitely not right now. Uh, are they taking our jobs? Definitely not. Um, robots in cinema and film, TV, these, these have been used for decades uh, to, to be able to do things that you can't do normally uh, by hand with a camera. Um, robots today are even more capable and can do some really cool things like move the camera at incredibly high speeds. Um, we can get shots, you know, following things that are following, things that are blowing up. Uh, we can also move the camera in very precise ways. Right? So the robot can move to a certain position, stop right on a dime, move in a straight line, and you don't need a bunch of rigging and whatnot to achieve that. Um, with that precision also comes repeatability. So the robot can do a pass, do it again, do it over and over as many times as you want, and <coughs> you can then take those layers, put them on top of each other in post, and be able to do some interesting things with uh, VFX and whatnot. Um, the last thing that's really interesting about robots is that they can be integrated into other technologies. So for example, you can tie in the position tracking innate to the robot into something like virtual production with an LED wall, or you can tie in the timing of the robot to other actuated things like a cylinder launching something in the air or uh, an explosion you know, happening on your set and have everything very precisely timed. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of things that robots can do that humans can't, right? I think what's most exciting for me is when we're talking about these categories with the precision, the integration, the high speed, uh, and repeatability, right? You start combining some of these different capabilities uh, into a single shot, and that's when it gets really exciting for me. Um, what we'd like to do now, we'd like to show you our reel. Uh, so some of the best shots created by our partners over this past year. Um, and as, as you watch this, Go ahead and look for some of these different capabilities that we're talking about. And, uh, and yeah, let's just jump into it. Why don't we watch that reel?
Okay, so uh, just another shout out to our, our incredible partners who are creating such, uh, such amazing footage as you just saw. Um, it, as you looked at those shots, as you saw those, uh, I'm sure you kind of were able to pick out some of, the, some of the capabilities we were talking about with the high speed and the precision and the repeatability. Uh, each one of those shots took advantage of, of different, one or more of those capabilities, right? Um, in answering the question that we're here to talk about today, as far as why are these robots being used more and more, I would say that that is one of the answers, right? Uh, these robots are becoming more and more capable as, as tech gets better and better. Um, you're able to do more and more things with these robots, so uh, that's one of the reasons. Yeah, for sure. Um, these robots are, are becoming much more capable, but as they get better and better, Mike, um, they're also getting easier to use. Um, and that's an area where we at CSU have really focused our attention, is building a cinema robot that was easy to use. That's quick on set to allow you to get the shots that you and your creative team need to get in less time. Um, and, and that's the thing. We've developed a system that's fast and simple to use. Yeah, absolutely. So why don't we, um, why don't we jump in and show our system? Um, and yeah, let me, I'll just turn it over to you and let you. Sure. So uh, what we'll start with, what we'll kind of walk through right now is basically how to move the robot and write a program. Um, to start with, how to move the robot, okay? So when it comes to our system, moving the robot includes using this wand right here, okay? So this is the main way to manipulate the camera, get it into a keyframe, set your position, and then start building your program that way. So the wand has a trigger on the back, as you can see, and it has a joystick in the front here. And I'll show you how those work here in just a sec. So when I squeeze the trigger, it's like I'm essentially grabbing the camera and moving it wherever I want. It's in my hand. So you'll see I'll squeeze the trigger. And when I move up, camera moves up. Down, left, right, out, in. I can also pan and, and, and uh, tilt all at the same time to really give me the ultimate flexibility to uh, move the camera wherever I want to in space. I don't have to think about what direction I'm facing or you know, what button moves the camera in which way. I simply grab it. So we get a lot of questions, uh, or the same question a lot of, I really just want to grab the camera and just move it. Uh, can I do that? Well, no, this is an industrial robot arm. Uh, so it's not really possible, but this is kind of the next best thing, right? That's right. You know, some of our robots are actually much bigger than this, and it wouldn't be very safe to just grab that bigger robot and move it around with your hands. But this technology works across all of our, our robot line. You can be near the robot, you can be far away, but either way, it's an intuitive way to move it. Yeah, absolutely. Now, one of the things that we do get as well is, you know, that's great to move the camera in any way I want, but sometimes I want to have a more well-defined motion. So, for example, if I just want to do a push in directly down the lens. I'm not going to want to grab the camera and try to follow that line. That's impossible, right? So that's where the joystick comes in. So with the joystick, I can align my hand with the direction that I want the camera to move and push the joystick in that way. So for example, if I want to push in directly uh, down, the, down the lens, I have to hold this in the vertical orientation so that I'm aligned with the direction of the lens. Now when I pull down on the, trig on the joystick, camera moves in that direction. If I push up, it moves up. But you'll see now that as I turn my hand and I push up and down on the joystick, camera actually moves left and right because that's how I've oriented my hand. So it's like, it's almost like whatever cam, whichever direction you want the camera to move, you just push the joystick in that direction. Exactly. And I've been pushing you know, up and down, but it, it moves any way that I want to push the joystick. I can loosen it up so that it moves in any way like that, or I can lock it down so it only moves camera up, down, left, right, in, out, and it won't move off of any line I'm trying to keep. Okay, very cool. Now similarly, I can also use the joystick to get uh, specific pan and tilt motions out of the camera. So for example, let's say I was reorienting my camera like this with the trigger, and I get generally in the frame that I like. Let me uh, maybe turn it this way so it's easier to see. I get in a frame I like, now the, the director says, oh, actually, can you just tilt down a little bit? Okay, so I'll change the mode here on my screen. I'll show you here in a sec. Uh, and when I now use the joystick, instead of pushing up, down, in, out, 
the joystick will cause the camera to pan and tilt. So I can tilt down, or I can turn left, right, and now the camera moves in a panning motion. Okay. Very cool. So, so we've talked about the trigger, the joystick, got a couple different options for moving it, right? Mm -hmm. um, and in my experience, it just kind of depends on the user, sure. uh, kind of using a combination of the two. And we, those primarily are, we're, we're, we're looking at moving the camera in space, right? Correct. Um, can you talk about options for what if I want like a camera, like POV? Yeah, right? so, so sometimes I don't necessarily want to have to look over the camera, where is that on set, and try to translate that into, oh, in order to get what the director wants, I need to move boom up or I need to move camera left, right? An easier way to do that is actually to just look at the monitor, see what the camera's seeing, and then move in kind of that camera point of view, right? So if, you, if we jump over to our user interface here, you'll be able to see that I can pull up these controls that allow me to move the camera uh, in whatever direction makes sense when you're looking at the screen. So for example, if I'm looking at the screen, uh, and maybe we reorient ourselves so we're looking at something useful here. We'll look at this bike and the director says, oh, I want to be uh, maybe up a little higher, uh, pointed more at that logo there. Then I can just click on uh, the up button on translate on the screen here and that's the direction that it moves, left. So now it, the, these buttons are making sense relative to this screen and I can be sure that whichever direction I want to move, uh, that's the direction it's going to go. Awesome, okay. So lots of options on how to move the camera, get it into position. Um, some people love the wand, some people love a mixture of both, um, but it really just gives you that flexibility to do whatever's natural to you uh, and quickly and efficiently get on set. One, one part that I love is, is using this trigger to easily uh, you know, change large orientation changes. So for example, if I'm pointed at you know, this bike, but we've got a table here with something on it and the director's like, okay, I wanna go from here to a top-down view, I can just grab the trigger and just quickly orient it and pull it right where I want it, get it generally into the spot, and then I can dial that in with the joystick, really nailing in exactly the position and framing that I'm looking for. Great, great. So lots of options for, for moving the camera. Uh, and it, it, it really is uh, very intuitive. Um, while we're, you brought up the interface here. Um, maybe if we can do a quick over, overview of this and uh, just kind of sure. showing our, uh, our software, which is called C2 Lab. Yeah, and before we jump right into the interface, I just wanna make, make it clear that what I'm operating on is this tablet right here. So this is basically your workstation. You don't need a computer at a desk. Everything can be done from this tablet right here and the wand to move the robot. So jumping into what you're seeing on the tablet now, uh, as Mike said, You'll notice here that we are running a program at the beginning, and this is the program we are running where we've got some keyframes set on a timeline, which is you know familiar from editing video or animation. Um, same same idea. Every keyframe represents a position of the camera, maybe a focus point or a zoom point. Um, you can see these different channels here in my timeline right there. As I've been operating the robot with the wand some of these filters up here in the top right have allowed me to change how that joystick responds as I push on it or the trigger itself. Um, so those are kind of the, the main initial things. There's, there's a lot more features that we could dive into and spend all day on. Mm -hmm. But I think what you guys really want to see is, is how we go about building the program. Yeah, let's do it. I'd, I'd love to just show them what it's like, show them the workflow sure. and what it's like, how, how quick it is to program something. Cool. Um, so I think what we'll do is I will play director here. Uh, I'll give Jacob some direction. Uh, I think we'll just do like four keyframes and we'll just turn Jacob loose to, to program that. Great. All right, so here's what I'm thinking. Okay. Um, let's just do, let's start kind of over here uh, as a wide, that'll be our one. Um, we'll push in, kind of look at that, uh, the logo on the front under the handlebars. Okay. That'll be our two and then we'll kind of move down that, that link where it says pivot, land on the gear, uh, that'll be our three, kind of a, a tight on that gear, and we'll stop there for a beat, and our four will be a wide back here where we can see 
Uh, we'll see Sisu, and we'll see the bike as well. Cool. All right, let's get to it. All right. So uh, first I'm going to jump in and just start a new program here. Uh, we'll just start fresh and clean. Then uh, I'm probably going to want to pull the track out this way a bit. Uh, watch yourself there, Mike. Yep. <laughs> get ourselves into location for that first keyframe. Something like this. We probably want to zoom out I'm, I'm assuming to a wider view yeah yeah let's just go as wide as we can okay so we're on an 18 to 35 right now so we'll start at 18 and then let me just turn this towards me so i can face both cameras and what are you thinking there uh can you come yeah yeah that's looking good try to get that whole bike in there yeah you pan left just a little bit okay we'll center it go up. ahead and yeah yeah, Does that look cool. good? Cool. All right, so now the first thing I'm going to do is set my focus. Um, the focus motors are integrated right into the system. We use C-Motion RE motors. And we'll set that keyframe right there. Looks pretty good. Cool. Uh, so now I just save that keyframe. And you can see on my timeline that I've now got a uh, keyframe saved. Great. Um, so from here, we'll just go ahead and do that push in. So I'll use that joystick to kind of just drive towards the bike first, kind of get me in the general vicinity. Yeah. And why don't you go ahead and knock those those other keyframes out? I, I'd like to point out a couple of other things. Uh, one thing that is really nice about the CSU system is, uh, as you can tell, it, we're programming live, right? Um, it makes it really nice. Uh, you, you don't have to. Um, Pre-program everything, then you show up on set, and then you know nothing's in the same place, right? So you got to tweak it all. Uh, it's all done right here, uh, very fast, easy to update. Uh, that's one of my favorite things, and that's what uh, I've seen directors love about the system. Um, so it looks like Jacob is working on keyframe three here. Um, we'll we will pull back a little bit um, for after we write this program and kind of give you a little bit more detail on, on exactly what he's doing, show you some of the features of CSU Lab. Um, and then as well, I wanted to say, be sure to put your questions in the chat. We're, we're happy to answer those. We'll, after, after he builds this, we'll take some questions. Cool, got that keyframe there. And then uh, we'll just kind of pull out to that wider shot to make sure that, that robot's out of the way and not in the frame. We can move the track over in this case. And uh, yeah, that's looking good. Get that in there real nice. Yeah. How's that looking? That. Focus up. So you'll notice he, he has full control over the uh, the fizz motors, focus iris and zoom, and we'll we can talk more about that here in just a second as well. Yeah. So now I'm just going to set a couple of settings uh, on this move to ensure that I have kind of the right motions as far as straight line moves and whatnot. Um, and we'll come to a full stop there at the bottom, and then we'll pull back straight here. Uh, as well as make that a straight line move from there to there. Cool. So uh, yeah, let's see what that looks like. So we'll go ahead and uh, compile that. And let me jump over here, get that to run. So I'll run it, we'll go ahead and run it backwards. Um, that allows me to move back to the first position the quickest and easiest way so I know it won't run into anything. And uh, we'll go ahead and run that backwards. Here we go, three, two, one, action. Yes. Cool. Now I was I was holding the trigger at about fifty percent just to make sure the first run was safe. So we'll run it forwards at full speed. 
And this time Let's I'll just it. go ahead and push the start button so I don't have to hold that trigger to run it. Uh, so forwards, 100%. Let's do it. Ready? Three, two, one, action. Cool. Perfect. Just, just like that. Just we got a shot. Wanted. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> let's, let's roll it. Sweet. Call it good. Yeah. That's a wrap. <laughs> cool. So, so there you can see, I mean, usually how it goes on set is, uh, you know, we'll take some direction from, from director, DP, whatever, and rough out the keyframes in just a few minutes like that, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that was what, three or four minutes. Um, and then we've got, we can take however much time we want to really dial it in from there. Yeah, and if we need to fine tune it, we can always just jump back to one of those keyframes. Mm. Uh, we can adjust, maybe the director says, actually, I need you to tilt down a little bit or, or maybe add a keyframe in between. So we'll play through it and then stop at the point he wants to add a keyframe and make some adjustment to the position of the camera, add a new keyframe. And then that will basically add the constraint that the director wants. Yeah, absolutely. So, so you can see how how quickly uh, you're able to program with with this system. Um, why don't we go ahead? Uh, Phil is on the line with the chat. Phil, do we have any questions that we should address at this point? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, thanks for uh, uh, for asking. We Alex uh, came in and said that uh, that. Uh, they really liked it better running backwards. Um, they they wanted to know if we could actually record that, so that way we could uh, have something long term running backwards. And uh, another question came in and says if we needed to make some small tweaks to the program in the middle of the program, how would we make those tweaks once the program is already written? Great question. Why don't, why don't we do that? Why don't we yeah. uh, add? Maybe we, if we add a full stop at uh, at that logo, for example. Okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, we could do that. Uh, just before we even jump into that, one thing I will also note: if we jump over to the user interface, we can open up the previs of the program, and this is really helpful when you're making changes like this to really visualize what's going on with the program, to see kind of how that motion is playing out, how the robot's calculating the paths in between those points. So you can see this playing out right here where we've got our keyframe one, two, three in blue, and then out to four is yellow. And that yellow is just because we're pushing the speed of the robot on that last one. Um, and then the, uh, the green is the path of the target. So where's the camera pointing and what's it focused on? And they should all be clumped around the, the bike, but you'll notice that you know keyframe four is way out here. That's likely because I it looked in focus, but I wasn't measuring with a measuring tape, and so uh, I was just eyeballing the focus and maybe put it a little bit too far behind the bike. But this helps me to see that really quickly. Uh, I can see that if I needed to fix that, I can just come over here to keyframe four in the target and see that I set the uh, mm. focus distance to be 16 feet, which obviously that's not 16 feet. It's probably more like 10 feet or yep. something like yep. that. So I can just drop in 10 feet right here we could, we could get out a tape measure, right? We yeah, we could get out a tape measure, just measure that, put in the correct value, and now when I look at the path, we'll probably see that it's much closer to where it's supposed to be. Take a look at that real quick. And this was just a guess. We'll see how, how good my guess was. Yeah, it looks like it's in the general vicinity now of kind of where the bike actually is. Um, now, as far as changing that point to a, a full stop, one way to make sure we're changing the right keyframe is just to run it, right? So we'll go ahead and run it backwards. Uh, get this set, and then let me put it into our faster speed mode to run it backwards so it doesn't take all day. And we'll go ahead and run it until we get closer to that point. And then I can just pause it by letting go of the trigger here or slow it down a little bit. Okay, so we're talking about right here. Now, if we go back to our timeline, we can see that our uh, cursor is right at keyframe two, which is makes sense. That's our second keyframe. It's a little obvious in this four keyframe program, but when you have multiple keyframes, that, that feature is really helpful to help you know exactly where you're trying to make a change. So just to be accurate, we'll just go ahead and do a go to position. So we're right on that keyframe with the camera. Um, now, in this case, if we wanted the camera to come to a full stop, we're just going to select that camera channel keyframe, and we're going to turn on full stop. Now, what that tells it to do is it, it tells the, the robot to actually 
uh, just come to a stop and, and then continue on to the next one. And oh. if I wanted to stop for some period of time, I could also put some hold time into that stop so that it hangs out in that spot for some amount of time. While we're here, can we just can we just pan over just a little bit? Sure. Just yeah. Pan left. Yeah. So if we want to pan left, um, one easy way to do that, as we showed before, is just to pop up the on-screen controller, hop over to the robot control here, and then uh, we just click pan left. And if yeah. you want to dial in that speed so it moves a little slower, I can go to my tortoise mode, and now it'll be much more fine control. All right. What do you what do you think about that, director? Sure. Yeah, that's great. Feels good. Cool. So now that we're in the position the director wants for keyframe two. I just need to click on my keyframe that I want to update and then go ahead and click update position. And uh, since I changed the camera and the target, I just need to update both. And then we're good to go. Should we run it? Let's do it. Okay, this time uh, instead of running it backwards, I'll just go ahead and restart to the first position since I'm pretty close to there anyways. So you'll notice that after it's done compiling, it'll ask me to go ahead and squeeze the trigger to reset and the camera just kind of finds its way back to the first point or whatever point you have your cursor on. All right, forward 100%. Here we go. Three, two, one, action. Cool. Great. Now, if we wanted to, we could also dial in how quickly it comes to a stop. Um, you probably notice there's a pretty, pretty quick stop there. So if we want to jump in here and say, I want to ease out a little slower on that keyframe where we come to a stop. We can pull this ease out a little bit longer. So now it'll spend 1.2 seconds kind of coming to a slow stop instead of the half second that it was before. And that'll make it feel a lot more smooth and natural. Sure. OK. Very cool. So again, that's uh, within each keyframe, you've got uh, some options for, for dialing in that, that motion. Yeah, exactly. Um, one of the other things that I want to point out is as I've been setting these keyframes, I've been programming the focus using the joystick, right? Um, that's really handy because it's all in one. It's here. I can control focus, zoom, iris. You can put up to three fizz motors on your camera and have them controlled directly through this interface. But let's say you're on a bigger set. You need to move quickly. One of the ways that you can use, uh, you can increase your productivity there is to use a C motion hand unit. So as I mentioned, our motors are, are RE C motion motors. Uh, and C motion has the C pro hand unit, which is really nice. Um, when I turn it on, it will automatically connect to the motors uh, on the system. And now when I use the, the wheel here, you'll actually see the focus changing uh, on the system. Or I can zoom in and out. I've got full control here in my hand. So the workflow there is if you know we're on set, we need to move quickly. I can have somebody setting focus as I'm moving the camera. And then every time I save a keyframe, it will it it will save that focus value. And then when I want to run my program, I just turn off the C Pro hand unit. And now control of the, of the fizz motors is back in the robot's hands. So when I run the program, it hits all those marks. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Um, I, I think there's a couple of big advantages to this. Uh, the first one being, like Jacob mentioned, he can hand off the hand unit to, to focus puller, and he doesn't have to worry about that anymore, right? He just focuses on the robot, and you're able to program it just that much faster. Yep. Um, the second one being, uh, if you you write your program for the for the robot, and then you can hand off the the hand unit again to the AC or to your focus puller, and uh, you can run that same robot motion, but now you've got your, the flexibility of, of pulling focus manually. So if you're working with talent yep. or, or anything that moves, right, the robot's going to hit its marks every time, but uh, talent doesn't, isn't as precise as a robot, so you've got that flexibility. Yeah, I, I definitely know I've been on set with people who, you know, are doing their thing, hitting their marks, but not always right on the same mark. And if you've got a shallow depth of field, there's no way that, you know, you're going to be able to hit focus without some yeah. human able to adjust what that focus needs to be. Yeah, absolutely. Um, OK, well, before we keep going here, uh, Phil, do we have any other questions? Uh, no, but not right now. Right now, the chat's clear. OK. Well, in that case, um, why don't we, we, we looked at the preview window. Yeah, there's a couple uh, other features we could show off, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think our, our viewers might be interested to see 
um, you know, that's obviously a lot of data that that is stored right here in the CCU lab. How do you get that out? Yeah, good, great question. So we've written our program. Now let's say we need to sync this up with some VFX workflow. We want to bring this into an animation or, or add some graphics to our, our video. So in the menu here in our interface you, in CCU lab, you can see if we go to our F, a VFX export, uh, you can select export to FBX, one of your options. That's a FBX is a general file type for camera paths uh, that's commonly used with all kinds of animation environments, Maya, Cinema 4D, Unreal Engine, that kind of stuff. We also do have a specific export just for Unreal Engine that makes it super easy to bring in uh, this file and it automatically generates your camera object and gets it all set up for you, which is real nice. Um, lastly, you know, the, the other way to do this is to actually program the camera motion in an animation environment and then import that to the robot as an FBX. And so that way you can have your camera doing something very specific that you've already set your scene in your animation environment, or you could have you know, the robot doing something entirely different, like maybe you have the robot moving a dinosaur head or something like that, that you've animated to be just the motion you want. You have that fine tune in the animation control, uh, and then you bring that over to the robot and run it. Yeah, I can definitely see the, the benefits of, of this. It seems very powerful, right? Especially, uh, I mean, say you're, you're doing a music video, right? It's a long, a long program. Um, where you'd be able to do that offline, um, program it in your favorite software, right? Whether it's Blender or After Effects or Maya, whatever, and load it in here and just just be ready to go. So yep. definitely see uh, that being pretty powerful. Um, okay, well, let's talk a little bit about safety, right? Um, this is obviously a, a pretty big rig, very uh, presumably very powerful motors. Um, can you walk us through some of the, the safety features? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, and honestly, whenever I've been on set, that's, that's one of the first questions that production will ask me is, is your robot safe? Or is it gonna take somebody's arm off or hurt someone? Um, and what I always tell them is that our robot is by far the safest robot in the industry. Um, we come from an industrial robotics background where we take uh, robot safety uh, very, very seriously. And we've built in a number of features to allow you to always be in full control and feel like you have that control. So the first thing is, and, and the most important, if whenever you're moving the robot, there's a switch on the back of your tablet that has to be pulled. So when I'm not pulling the switch or when I set it down, there's no way the robot can physically move. It's, it's tied electrically to the motors of the robot. So when I pull this enable switch, then I can move the robot with my wand, I can run my programs, do everything I need. But if ever something goes wrong or it starts moving out of a way I don't expect, I can just let go of that enable switch, or technically I can just squeeze it all the way down. Either way, the robot will stop immediately. Yeah, that's, uh, you mentioned it being the safest system, the safest robot in the industry, right? I, I really believe that too. And uh, I've spent some time with other robots out there. And I mean, there was one instance where the camera was flying straight towards my head because the operator, I don't know, pushed the wrong button or something. And it was, I mean, it was scary, right? So you, you gotta be very intentional with this system, right? The robot's not gonna move unless you want it to move. That's right, yeah. It, really what safety comes down to is intentionality and the ability to quickly stop the robot whenever you need it to. So along with the enable switch, there are e-stop buttons here and on our control system over there. Uh, and you can even have an external emergency stop that your director can hold or, or your safety person on set. A anybody uh, can be in, in control of the robot. The last piece is, you know, you mentioned about high speed and you know, not knowing when the robot was gonna move fast or whatnot. So on our system, there's a key switch that you have to turn in order to allow the robot to move fast. Uh, it's kind of like your uh, safety disengage for you know, mm -hmm. those bombs in the old movie or something like that. So in the slow speed mode, robot cannot physically move faster than a certain safe speed that we've set. So you can jog the robot, you move it around, you can run programs slowly, but when you want to run fast, you have to intentionally turn that key switch to the fast mode, and then you can turn it, you can run the robot at your full speed. So kind of a, a programming mode and then a production mode. Almost, exactly, right, right. Yep. yep. Awesome. 
Very cool. Well, um, I think with, with that, like we started seeing some of this hardware. Can you just walk us through these different pieces of hardware and, and what comes with the system? Sure. Yeah. So let's uh, let's walk through uh, different pieces of hardware. I already mentioned you have this tablet and wand. That's your main uh, interface and way to move the robot. It's really what you're going to be dealing with most of the time. But as far as moving around on set and getting from place to place, this tablet and wand, they live inside a Pelican case that comes with the system. Um, and this snaps closed. It's real rugged and durable, so you can just you know, toss this into your uh, gear van, van gear, gear van. Uh, then behind that, you'll see that we have our uh, controls cabinet back here. This is where we were looking at just before with the key switch, and it's got some connections for our case and whatnot. Uh, this is also kind of the main brains to the robot, which controls all the motors and whatnot, um, and, and that needs to go with your system. So that's kind of the control side. Now the actual kind of manipulator robot side is over here. So uh, obviously you got your robot arm. Um, we've got a few different sizes that we'll, we'll mention here in just a minute and go over what those are. Um, but the robot then is sitting on a base. And in this case, uh, our base is the track pedestal with the track uh, that it's sitting on. So this track right here um, is, uh, can be broken apart into different sections. You'll notice down here that there's uh, this red lever down there, and that's where the home section separates from one of the extension sections. Um, and so it's, it's actually not too difficult to separate this out, uh, take the, the robot, put it in a van, take it somewhere else, put the track back together and get going. The other option is we also have the track that can be, uh, excuse me, the robot can be on a uh, mobile base, which is essentially uh, just a, a pedestal uh, with a bunch of weights, and then it's got some casters built into the bottom so that when you want to move, you just bring the feet up, it goes down on the casters, and you can move it around on set. You can push it onto a, a lift gate, put it up in a truck, and, and take it where you need to go. Awesome. OK. Um, before we move on, let me just check. Let's check back in with Phil. Phil, do we have any other questions? Awesome. No more questions at this point. What we'd like to do now, um, I'd like to just show you uh, our, our different robot arms, and right, kind of show you our, our product offering. We've got a few different sizes that I'd like to just walk you through, kind of show you the, uh, the benefits of each. So the first one we're going to look at, we're just going to look at our website here. Um, the C11 is the first one, the smallest robot. Uh, the 11 stands for 1,100 millimeters or 1.1 meters reach. So, uh, I mean, you double that, you get 2.2 meters side to side, which is about the same as 7.8 feet. So that's the wingspan. Um, so this is really great for tabletop, also a great model mover. Let's go ahead and look at the C14. It's the next size up. Again, so we're looking at 1.4 meters reach to each side. Uh, that comes out to you know 2.8 meters wingspan, which is the same as 9.3 feet. Um, this is a, a very popular robot. Um, it fits through a standard door, plugs into wall power. Um, it's great for you know uh, run and gun type moco work. It's easy to put in a trailer and a truck and just take it on set and, and be ready to go. Let's look at the C20. So we are looking at, uh, this, is, this is the robot that we've got here on our set, on, in our studio that you've seen. Um, it's got a reach of just over two meters. So wingspan, four meters or 13.2 feet. Uh, it's, this is by far our, our most popular robot, kind of the best of all worlds um, between you know, reach and speed and transportability. Uh, just a great robot all around it. Uh, like Jacob mentioned, it can be on a pedestal, can also work with track. Let's look at C31. This is our biggest robot, uh, and it is big. We're talking over, over 10 feet, over three meters reach to either side. So, you know, 20 foot wingspan. It's uh, my favorite robot for that reason. You almost don't even have to worry about reach limits or access limits. Um, 
I also really like the the base design. It kind of has a, a tripod style base that is uh, just makes it really easy to drop down and and start shooting. Okay. Well, with that, what we'd like to do now is we know that you filmmakers love the BTS. We're going to pull back the curtain and we'd like to give you a BTS view of CC and show you uh, what all we do here. So we're going mobile. Let's go. And uh, we're going to give you a quick tour. All right. Well, first of all, come on out here. So this is uh, one of our engineering areas where we have a mixture of mechanical engineers, electrical, software engineers, uh, building the great products that you see us come out with all the time. So this is where they work. Um, if we head this way, we'll get to see kind of the, some of the robots and whatnot that they're working on. We also have a, a wonderful support team, marketing and sales as well. And then over here, over here, you can see we've got some, uh, some robots. This is where the Jacob's team. Yeah, some of our software engineers, like Bryson right here, testing out their code, getting it running on the robots. Um, he's working on a C14 right now. Over here, you can see uh, one of our C31 robots. As you can see, it's a pretty big boy. Um, like I said, it's got about 3.1 meter reach to both sides. Uh, it's got a real solid tripod base that makes it super easy to just take on set, plop down, and it's immediately stable and ready to go. Cool. Let's get going. Uh, we're gonna head out. We're gonna look at the uh, the machine shop. So one of the really cool things about us here at Sisu is we do just about everything right here in house, from the engineering, the design, the software, uh, but we also fabricate the parts and build the robots here. So this is the machine shop. Uh, we can actually come right on up here. This is uh, right behind me here. This is our biggest CNC machine. Uh, this, that's what they use to, to machine the track sections and some of the other robot parts. We've also got six or seven or eight other CNC mills and lathes back there. So a lot of machining goes on back here. Yeah, over here we've got uh, uh, our, another one of our track systems. This one we use for a lot of development. Uh, we've got another developer working on over here. Uh, so actually, this is Rachel back here. She's a product owner of uh, our products. Some of you may have. Uh, You'll met meet her, her in another session of yep. the Chaos Show. Oh, that's right. Yeah, she'll be in another session. Um, and this track uh, we've been running some cycle testing on. Uh, we've put like about a month or two months straight of running on the track, just trying to get. Any issues that may come up, figure them out now so that when you get your tracks, it's good to go and it always works. Awesome. So after the, the, after the parts are machined back here, uh, they are sent over here to the manufacturing and assembly area. We've got a lot of uh, inventory here. Um, so one of the other things that we do here at CSU, uh, we're an engineering company. We've built an awesome cinema product, but we also uh, have other products that we build. For example, our OmniSharp knife sharpening system. So if you come this way, you'll see some of the assembly going on with that system right here. Uh, we got a couple of machines being built and processed going out uh, into the world to help sharpen knives. And then back in this corner is where you'll find uh, our similar robots being built and tested. And, uh, and overall, this is where they're prepared to, to ship out to our customers. We've got C20 here on, on the pedestal, another C20 as well. Uh, you can see they're building a smart transformer and, and some track, track sections over there as well. So, this is where it all comes together. This is it. That's, that's where, this is where it happens. All right, why don't we head back to the studio? And as we do, I want to point out that we love to uh, we love to do personal tours uh, and visits. If if you want to do a virtual tour, we'd love to do that. Feel free to go on our site uh, and the contact us form. Let us know. We'd be happy to set up a virtual tour. Or if you're in the area, we, we can do an in-person tour as well. So love to show you around, show you more details and of our system, answer your questions. Whatever, whatever questions you may have, we'd love to hear them. All right. Head back in the studio. We'll answer a few more questions.
Right. So uh, with that, I'd like to kind of conclude with just uh, a reminder that um, you know these sessions will go up on YouTube following the Chaos Show. So if you're unable to attend any of these sessions and you'd like to, uh, stay tuned to our YouTube channel. We'll, we'll post them there. Again, follow us on Instagram. That QR code is on screen. Scan that. That'll take you there. And if you're interested in, in sales, uh, we, we sell these robots here at CSU, but we've got a lot of partners as well. If you're interested in rentals, we'd be happy to point you to uh, one of those partners who would be happy to, to provide a robot for your next shoot. Yeah, we've also got uh, training opportunities as well. If you're interested in becoming a robot operator, um, we're always looking for great robot operators to get involved and, and be able to run these robots on set. So send us a message. You can go to our website. You can say, uh, what's the button? Contact us, yep. and uh, yep. then we'll let you know when the next training opportunity is coming up in your area. All right. Thanks for watching, guys.